Every year, millions of Bangladeshis are affected by flash flooding. Sudden shifts in river courses destroy crops, farms and homesteads, decimating communities. The resulting sandbars that are left behind aren't stable enough to support natural vegetative growth and they remain as barren sand until the rivers rise again. The communities here are being completely changed through Practical Actions Project. Their innovation and new approach had them creating a new farming technique known as sandbar cropping. It sounded almost farcical that pumpkins could provide such uh, an incredible solution to a terrible problem. I was supposed to be travelling to Bangladesh to see and experience this firsthand, but due to political risks I've been unable to travel there. I've got some questions that I wanted to ask the local people from both areas in order to find out more about the issue. First, I'm talking to Haseen and Nazmal. They both travelled to the village of Chalmari to talk to the locals who are yet to receive any help or support from Practical Action to establish the needs for the community. What is preventing them from using that land? To, to grow their own crops. First thing is about knowledge. They don't know that that sort of technology is existing yes, and sometimes is as, uh, as, as many as 27 times they shifted their household. So you can imagine their economic situation. They were kind of amazed and they didn't even think that it is, this is possible. But all of them expressed their willingness to participate in our program and to have uh, to move towards a better life. Sitting at the heart of this issue is starvation and malnutrition. And I don't think any of us can really imagine what it is to go hungry. So I wanted to better understand what effect on the body this really has. I met with nutritionist Joe Travers, who helped to explain it all. We've just heard from one family who, whose daily diet consists of rice, maybe some dal, and that's it. Mm -hmm. What happens to the body if that's all it's fueled by over a period of time? In the short term, protein energy malnutrition can lead to weight loss, so low weight for your height. But in the long term, that can lead to poor cognitive development and poor physical development in children. This can lead on to poor educational attainment and also because their physical development is affected, it can have an effect on how their ability to carry out physical labour and that has an impact on their capacity to earn money and from that you get this cycle so they have less money to spend on good nutrition, their children don't learn as well because they've got poor cognitive development and the cycle continues and continues through generations. Practical Action have set up a soup kitchen at Spitalfields Market in London and I'm going to go and get myself as involved as I can to find out more from the staff about their experiences and, well, to try and make myself useful. This is Amanda and Lil and they've managed to uh, pull off what I couldn't. They managed to make their way over to Bangladesh to visit the project first hand. I don't think anything could have prepared me for the poverty that, that, that existed in the area where practical action hadn't been working. We asked uh, the children in the, in the village to draw us some pictures and one of them drew a picture and he wrote on it, this is a pumpkin, it grows in our country, it is delicious, but we can't afford to eat it. I think what I noticed the most was just how much happier everyone was. Because they were comfortable in their own lives, they were able to feed their families, they were able to send their children to school, they were able to have a nice home, you know. It, it was just amazing to be able to see the difference that it made. I've heard about the struggle in the region, but the good news is we can make a difference. <laughs> She is believing how the life is transforming, how the infertile land is transforming the lives of 
millions of poor in Bangladesh at the moment. So innovation is not feeding them only food and money. They are also equally helping them to psychologically to break through their mind in a negative direction to a positive direction to transform their life and go ahead with the positive hope for a prosperity in future. So I hope you're as gripped by this proposition as I am. We, we started out together on this, listening to communities that have nothing but are waiting for the support that practical action can give them. We then travelled to the communities that have had that support and we've seen the way their lives have been transformed by something as simple as growing crops of pumpkins in land that they thought was completely infertile. And we can see that actually by continuing to support these projects, we can change lives well, beyond recognition, starvation, malnutrition, we can reduce that. Families can start to educate their children, better themselves, sustain themselves. All they need you to do is keep up that support. So please, keep your donations coming. Don't forget, the government will be matching you pound for pound.